Okay, we're going to start again as in the first video with an apple. This time we're going to be doing cloning, but we're going to start with a clone of the image rather than the quick clone where we blanked out or wiped out the original image and started with a blank canvas. This time we're going to be painting right on a copy of the original photograph. Now the reason we're using an apple is because an apple is a lot like a head, but it's a whole lot easier to paint. It's round, like a head, so that means there's highlights and shadows, and it has a 3D form. It has hard edges around the sides, and uh, there's some details that are similar to a face, such as the lips and eyelids. This is a, a very good area for practicing eyelids, and down over here it would be a good area for looking at how to practice uh, the changes in value and color on the cheeks. So what our goal is, is to take something that looks very photographic and remove the, so what I call the clues, the, uh, the things that tell a person that they're looking at a photograph. So that would be hard edges, very distinct edges and details. We're going to soften, but we don't want it to just look smear. You want to make it look like a painting. So we're going to try to just bring it uh, into a, a little bit of an impressionistic look. It's a, it's a fine line between a photograph and something that's um, unrecognizable. So we're going to try to stay nice and neat. Here's a little bit closer view of what we're, what we're after. And as you can see, it doesn't look like a photograph anymore. We've um, softened the edges especially around the edge on the left side there. It's pretty hard to tell where the apple actually ends and begins. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's paint ourselves an apple. Okay, so now we're going to start by painting our apple. We're going to start with the file Perfect Apple and uh, go up to File and drop down to clone. Let's keep it at 100%. Notice the size here. We want to um, see exactly what we're painting. Use the captured bristle brush. The two settings that I'm going to be adjusting and I'm talking about here are opacity and reset. Opacity is sort of like volume on your speakers or the amount of water coming through a garden hose. 100% is full blast. 0% is nothing. So you're going to want to have some opacity and the reset would be how strong the color is coming through from your original image underneath. So if you turned this all the way down to zero, the reset value to zero, what you end up with basically is just a blender. You're just being able to smear like with a, a stump and a charcoal stump. Push the colors around and for places like this edge here, and that's exactly what you want to do. Because in a painting there are lost and found edges which help to, uh, to make it look less like a photograph and more like a painting. So a very simple explanation. Now let's go to make the reset for painting of portraits. I usually have reset at uh, 30%, bringing through 30% of the color and have opacity at 40%. Use the brush size at about 17 for large areas to 20, 23 I'm using right now. And I'm pushing down fairly hard on my Wacom tablet, but I'm using and I'm using long strokes in the large areas because I'm not trying to keep that detail. So you'll notice how the detail just disappears in those areas. Now here I'm going to shrink the brush down a little bit because I want to keep some of this individual detail here. Same with the yellow up here. Sorry if I'm jumping around. 
but this is this is how I work. I don't tend to to paint it from left to right or top to bottom. You want to be moving around the image and don't spend any too much time in any one area, at least in the beginning. Try to bring the the entire image to a finish at the same time. At least that's my uh, school of thought on that subject. Now you notice I'm keeping the brush small still because I've got a little bit more detail that I'm interested in over here. Now let's just finish that up real quick. So I want to show you this area up at the top. Now this area is going to be very similar to working on eyelids or lips where you've got uh, two areas that meet an area of dark and light meeting and you want there to be a soft edge but you definitely want it to be a distinct edge at the same time. It's pretty tricky. It's probably the hardest part of the face for me anyway is the lips and the eyelids. In fact most people, or a lot of people I should say, just avoid the eyes altogether. But, but I'm going to show you how to do them later. and You'll find out they're not so hard. So I'm using a small brush, short strokes when I want to keep the detail, big brush, when I want to cover larger areas and lose detail. And I'm going to go real small here and go right over that area where I know the white is. You see that how the white's coming back? It's pulling in through from the image underneath. In fact, I'll leave it like this and you can watch. See the plus sign up there? It's pulling it in. Sometimes that you can do that so that you can see what's available for pulling in from one image into the other. Okay. So the apple's pretty much done. We can just keep working it to death, but the trick is to keep a light touch so that it has a nice, fresh feeling. Break up that detail so it doesn't look like a photograph, and you'll have a nice little painting in no time at all. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.